Hello guys, welcome to my channel How to Learn. In this video, I want to share you my Spring Boot interview experience. I was a Spring real time Spring Boot developer, and I want to. I attended uh, many interviews few months back, like nearly ten MNC interviews, and from them I have collected most tip tier two questions, and then I am making this video. Okay, it this video don't contain all Spring Boot interview questions, but this video only contain the most uh, repeated to interview questions which i have faced definitely it will help you guys because uh, i have attended companies like tcs infosys ibm vipron tecom and many more okay from them, from them only i have collected the most repeated to interview questions then let's start guys without wasting your time okay what are the disadvantages of spring boot normally in spring boot we have many ad advantages but if it's come to disadvantages the first one is lack of control and second one is prerequisites needed and third one is migration efforts okay now let me explain you by showing an example what are the disadvantages okay first one is lack of control normally what happens when the spring boot will add many dependencies which we uh, don't use okay sometimes if you observe here here i have added only some dependencies like dev tools and sata web but if you observe the dependency hierarchy, we have many things like JMinify dependency and Jackson dependencies and many things. But let's assume like I don't want Jackson dependency or I am not using JN Jupyter or JN5 in my project. And but these dependencies are always already added by default by Spring Boot. So what happens means the deployment file size will be increased. It is a disadvantage of this spring boot okay it is one of the disadvantages like i can simply in a one word i can say like lack of control okay and if it's come to second one migration efforts if you want to migrate some project from some other type, other framework like jsp or some ejp to spring boot development from scratch is needed it is one of the biggest disadvantages and prerequisite is needed it is the third one suppose you want to develop a spring boot project you should learn spring basic spring and want to understand many things then you want to come to spring boot and it will be a lot of waste time for us okay these are the disadvantages of the spring boot and let me go to the second one spring boot profile skills basically in whenever we are uh, de developing an application you have many environments like dev prod sid pre prod qa right and normally what happens means every db have different uh, like every environment have different dbs guys okay dev have separate db sd have separate db for configuring them we are using the profiles if it's come to the what is the pro definition for profile means a profile is a set of configuration settings and it helps us to have a, a different profile for every environment okay and in this way of setting different profile you can set different setting for each environment without affecting the other environment which will help us a lot it is just a simple technical definition now i will explain you an example okay normally uh, for using profiles we can use different way like maven settings line arguments jvm system parameters environment variables and many things but here i want to explain you a simple examples which i was using in real time okay first of all let's close all these tabs and here let's create some application dot property file let's assume like my application have two environments okay one is application iphone dev environment okay i have dev environment so i am creating a file like application iphone dev dot properties and let's assume like i have sid environment so i am creating another file application iphone sid dot properties okay and now my requirement is i want to um configure a port number based on environment okay normally by default what happens the spring boot application will be started on port number 8080 right now i want to configure in a way based on environment my application should be started on the particular port number for that i want to use a property spring dot profiles dot act to i want to set my act to profile as dev okay before starting our application let's once restart 
I mean, sorry, let's Maven update our project. Okay, after Maven updating, you can just simply run our application. It's like still updating, guys. Let's wait for a few seconds. Yeah, it was almost done. We can start it. Let's check now on which port number our application will be deployed. You can observe here this deployed on port number 8081. Okay, let's uh, remove these profiles. Okay, let's check what happens. Let's remove the property like spring dot profiles dot act two, and let's man update again. Now let's run our application again. Now let's check what happens. Normally it will be deployed under default port number 8080 guys. But when we set the profile act to profile, it is deploying on the profile which we set. Okay. Like that, this profiles work, guys. I think so you guys understand. Let's go to our other what is Spring Boot Startup Parent? Uh, Spring Boot Startup Parent it provides default configuration for our applications and it is used internally by all dependencies. Okay, our Spring Boot projects use Spring Boot Startup Parent as a parent in form.xml. Now I will show you where it is. Okay, here you can check the form.xml. You can observe the Spring Boot Startup Parent, guys. Okay. And it manages many things like configuration, dependency management, source encoding, and default Java version and resource filtering. Okay, it manages many things. Okay, guys, and let's go to our next question. How to handle exceptions in Spring Boot? Normally, as we know, like abnormal termination of a program is exception. And normally, for in Spring Boot, we use some annotations like at the rate controller advice which is used for handling exceptions okay and at the rate controller advice is specialization of at the rate component annotation which allows us to handle exceptions across the whole application in one global handling component and it can be used that you can be you can simply say as it is interceptor of exception thrown by methods like at the rate which are uh, annotated with other request mapping and others. Okay, and here by using this exception handling in Spring Boot, we also implement custom exception handling. But let's come to exception handling. It's a I can say like it will take so much time to explain in this video, but so I cannot explain it here. So I actually I made a video on exception handling. It's less than forty minutes, guys. You can also look at my playlist. Okay, you can find the concepts about exception handling, swagger, and many things. Okay. And I hope you guys understand and let's go to our next question. What is dev tools in Spring Boot? I can simply say like this dev tools use for reloading uh, live reloading of a project. When we make any changes in our code, normally we have to restart it. But if you add this dependency, this uh, dev tool, our project will be automatically restarted based on the changes we made. Okay, it means whenever we made a changes, our project will be restarted. Dev tool means developer tool, guys. Okay, I will show you an example how it works. Here in the pom.xml, you can check I have added a dependency dev tools, right? And now, what I want to do means I want to just add some print, uh, print statement here and let's add some symbols and let's save it. Let's check whether. It is restarted or not yeah you can observe here it is restarted right in this kind of way we can save a lot of time by stopping our application restarting again it will take a lot of time but by using the dev tools we can save a lot of time and what is swagger and spring boot normally you can i can simply say like swagger is the open source project used for generating rest api documents for restful web services it provides a user interface to access our RESTful web services via web browser. For enabling Swagger, we have to add some couple of dependencies and some configuration to be needed. But I cannot explain you here because it is a, uh, I can simply say like it's not a simple one. It will take a lot of time and you can check my playlist. You can find how many types of Amda servers are there in Spring Boot. In Spring Boot, 
normally everyone knows about the tomcat because while we are creating an application in spring initializer we simply we are simply adding the spring web dependencies which will get the tomcat but here we have three types of ambedda servers that are tomcat jetty and handetau okay but mostly in real time people will use tomcat guys in my real time experience and i was seen people using other different other servers like tomcat or i mean like other servers like handetau or jetty people are always using uh, tomcat in real time okay and let's go to next question can we disable default web server in spring boot yeah we can do it let me show you example how to do that okay if you observe here my application is working with tomcat and deployed on server h0 right now let me do one thing its application uh, let's go to application dot property file i have added this property guys okay now let's stop the application and now let's map and update our project once let's click on okay once update was done let's start our application okay let's wait for few seconds yeah it was done now let's start our application guys now let's check on which umbrella server our tomcat application started you can observe here our application was not using any embedded server because we disabled it okay like this we want to set that property for disabling the embedded server okay or default web server is it possible to change port in spring boot yeah we can do it even i have shown it in okay previous video and profiles but i want to show it show to you again okay let's make it a0 8.2 here and let's now update our project once and then we can we can start application okay now let's run our application of the spring boot app and let's check on which port of our spring boot application is deployed you can observe here our application is deployed on port number 802 like this you can change the port number of can we override or replace the embedded tomcat server in spring boot yes guys we can override it okay now if you observe here up to now when i am starting my application it's just starting on spring boot tomcat right i mean like it is starting on the embedded server tomcat but now i want to override it and i want to start it on jt server okay for that i have added this configuration now let's maven update our project once and let's check on which server it is started or not okay now i have done the maven update let's check it on which server it is started our application now it's starting on jetty guys okay you can observe it here like that we can override our spring boot embedded tomcat server and my next question is can we generate random port in spring boot it means our requirement is to generate a random port when whenever we are starting our application we have a property like server dot port equal to 0 okay i'm not going to do in live because it's just a small change and what you want to do means you want to go to application dot properties file and you have to add something like server dot port equal to 0 then we our application will be started on random port every time okay like that it works that's it guys that's all for today and and guys i have created a blog i have a blog in that i have created a post okay the top spring boot interview questions part one the reason i am creating the post is like sometimes the interviews are scheduled suddenly and you don't have time for going through videos in detail then you can visit my blog and you can just have some quick overview so it will be helpful for you for revision purpose okay if you don't have such time and i may miss some couple of points while explaining and you can get every single point here okay it will be definitely very useful for you guys okay i hope you enjoyed my video and if you have any queries you can please comment it in comment section okay thank you for watching my video